Twitch fans, it's me, Tom SG1, back for a review. Yes, a Star Trek review, as per the title page. Uh, I'm going to be doing issue one, Star Trek, the official Star Trek collection magazine, which is rather nice. Um, you get a magazine and you get a model. Um, now the magazine itself, it's quite a nice glossy little magazine, it's only 18 pages, um, not bad for 2 quid, 10 quid that they're charging normally, yeah, hmm, I'm a little dubious about that, but I've, I've, I have sub subscribed, because I'm a Star Trek fan, the, what attracts me to this set is, they're doing ships that you'd never normally see, like Gemadar attack ships, 8472 bio ships, um, the, the uh, Prometheus, um, stuff that's never had a physical model before as well. The Enterprise J from uh, from uh, an episode of Enterprise. Um, as Anti Prime, I think it is. Um, I can't remember. Sing no, Singularity? No, it's season 3 or 1. The name escapes me, but I'll put it down there at some point. But um, yeah, you get a nice little magazine. Um, it's not too bad. You get. Um, which is the issue 1 is the US Enterprise NCC 1701D. Commanded by Captain John Luc Picard. For uh, seven years, um, Class Rich Number One Seven O One D, Galaxy Class, built uh, Utopia Fleet Yard, Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards on Mars, launched twenty twenty three sixty three, destroyed twenty three seventy one, six hundred forty one meters, forty two decks, crew. Well, you see, all the official documentation states the crew was one thousand and twelve. However. In subsequent epi episodes, whenever the crew was mentioned, it was always 1,014. Um, top speed, it says here, 9.6 9 sustained. Actually, the maximum speed the Enterprise D ever got, not counting um, the episode when no one has gone before, was um, 9.65 in q -Hill. That's the fastest the Enterprise D actually goes at warp. Um... Weaponry, it's got 12 Type 10 Phaser Arrays, which are two on the saucer, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, yeah, twelve. I have to count for a moment there. Um, three photon torpedo launchers. And it was captained by Jean Picard, Edward Jellico. Although it says that in the magazine here, it was commanded by William T. Riker as well. And in a in the episode um, Tapestry, it was commanded by. Although we never see him on screen, a guy called Thomas Halloway. Um, yes, not too bad. A little bit of information about the Enterprise. I mean, some great CG renders of the ship itself. Which is pretty cool. Um, so it goes through the Enterprise D. Use the Enterprise D was more than a third of a mile long and a crew of over a thousand people. And it just shows you um, some nice colour images of you know various things. You're fighting the Borg, um, the, the, the back end, the bridge, transport room. Um, and it also goes through the sort of separation sequence. Although not really detailed, it just kind of shows you some nice pictures there. Um, some nice sort of specification drawings on here, and it shows you, it just points out all some of the major features, um, such as the main bridge, the buzzard collectors, the warp nacelles, the um, phaser arrays, where we are, phaser arrays, the lifeboat hatches, uh, shuttle bays, all that kind of stuff, torpedo launchers, um, pretty nice. Then you go in sort of like the Trump, uh, the design sketches from Andrew Probert, who um, designed it for Star Trek Next Generation, obviously. Um, then we get some... Now this is something I didn't see. I know I've seen quite a lot of um, early stuff on the Enterprise, but I've never seen this picture before. These are showing that the, the concept of the saucer separation. Um, one of the concepts was like a part of the saucer would pop out and fly off in space and do its thing. And then on this one, you've got, in an emergency, you could jettison all, not only the saucer itself, but parts of the saucer would pop out, including the nacelles, and, um, which was which was pretty cool. I quite like that idea. 
uh, as long as 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 well as lifeboats in case of a disaster. Um, but there's a lovely picture of the um, Star Drive um, forward section there with the battle bridge at the top, um, which is pretty cool. And then um, it's showing you the different um, versions of the Enterprise, you know, the filming version. There's also two CG versions of it as well. Um, although, a little sort of, a little, little bit of an in-joke. The Galaxy-class ships you see in the Deep Space Nine episode, Favour the Bold. Um, they're all CG, but these, you can see the register numbers on the all say 1701D. Um, because there's a CG render it of it for um, generations. When it goes to warp, one of the scenes where it goes to warp is a CG render. Other, some of the new, some of the, they did film some new scenes for this for the movie. They also did a lot of stock footage because um, it first appeared in the Next Generation episode Encounter at Farpoint, and then it was destroyed in the in the movie Generations, and then we last see it in the last ever episode of Enterprise in these other voyages in a new brand new CG version. So, I mean, overall, not a bad little magazine. Um, 18 pages, but for £10, I would have, I would have uh, like a bit more. But this was the first issue, so, you know, who can say? Um, but yeah, it's quite a nice little glossy magazine. Get the Enterprise D there, another picture of it on the back there. Um, but, on to the meat and veg of the, of the, uh, the reason why you buy it, really. Um, the model itself, which is pretty cool. You get the model and you also get a nice display stand. Now what difference between this set and the Star Wars set, um, they did a Star Wars vehicles one a couple of years ago and the, the Star Wars ones come in a, in a plastic case um, and you couldn't remove them from the from the display stands. These you can, you can, you can you know, pick them up and have a look at them properly. Um, I'll just talk about the display stand very briefly. Very nice. It comes on a real nice black base. Um, it's quite. I think this is diecast as well. Yeah, it is diecast. I was. If, you, if you're not sure, tap it against your teeth. It'll tell you. Um, it's diecast. It's not overly heavy, but it's nicely weighted, so it won't go anywhere. It's also got a non-slip uh, velvet um, base on the bottom. You can see I've got dust on mine already, because this will be a dust magnet. And it also tells you the name, yeah, the register number. If you can see that there, where is it? There we are. Um, so yeah, and you also get a nice bracket, um, a, a um, display bracket, which the ship itself, you just, what you do is you slide it in there, and then you slide it all together, and it sits in there quite comfortably. Also, you get a number of design, a number of display options with this. You get, um, you can use the, the two things that hold the saucer to hold the nacelles on, but it's not very secure like that. It has a tendency to slip out, but... There is an option there if you need if you need to. Also, you can connect it like so. Put the saucer in uh, like that, and it will hold it quite nicely there. But it's not very secure like that, so I wouldn't recommend it. But you can do that if you so choose. So onto the ship itself, then. Very nice. Saucer section is nicely in um, die cast. The star drive is in plastic, which means the weight of the saucer is heavier than the star drive. But actually, that would be correct. Um, the, the more weight was in the saucer than it was the, the star drive or the battle section depending on where uh, your mileage may vary um, it's got some nice light piping near cells so you can have the illusion that, that they're on and glowing um, it's all nicely painted you get some, and it's very accurate to the show I must admit there are there have been very different versions of the Enterprise D over the years and this, for, for the size it's the most accurate I've seen in a long time um, Love the name and register number on the top there. Get some nice cool poses. All the lifeboat hatches are all nicely painted in white. Um, but generally, I mean, on the underside as well, you see all the transporter emitters, which are these things. Um, you can see all the lifeboat hatches, which are all nicely moulded. They're not just painted on. They're nicely um, sort of moulded. I don't think you can see. Maybe you can see that there. But yeah, um... You got all the lights painted. Well, some of the lights painted black, some of the lights painted white to to you know um, give the illusion that the people in them, you know, that the, that the lights are on. Um, nice, nicely painted. It's just a nice model. I like it a lot. Now, a few nitpicks. There are a couple of nitpicks. Not many. There are a couple. Um, I'll get onto them. Firstly, you'll see there. 
There we are, you can see now. Here, you've got Shuttle Bay 2 and Shuttle Bay 3. Shuttle Bay 2 should be smaller than Shuttle Bay 3. You should have a smaller end uh, door. Um, but, you know, that's just a nitpick. The 1701D and these landing lines here, those should be yellow and not red. Uh, and it says Enterprise there and Enterprise there. Um, this, uh, uh, this side should say 1701D. NCC 1701D. These 1701Ds there are um, slightly cockeyed. They are on both sides cockeyed, which is a bit of a shame. But other than that, I think it's quite it's a fairly impressive model. Uh, oh, they've missed Enterprise there, but it's quite a small. It would be a quite a small um, uh, decal to put on there. So I can imagine. I can see why they haven't put it on. But uh, in the above the um, torpedo launcher there there would be the word Enterprise and that would be on both sides. So I can see why they've not put that on, because it's quite a small little thing. But other than that, very impressed with this. Very, very impressed. Um, apart from those nitpicks, I would give this a... I, mean, I don't like giving, you know, out of tens. Um, but for this case, I'm going to give this a, a nine. Because it's, it's as near perfect as you can get, it's just not quite as perfect as it could be. Um, but other than that, fairly, fairly impressive. I mean, I bought three of these. <laughs> Cause that's how much I like it. Um, because I'm going to try and see if I can scratch off the name of the register number and um, give it, you know, some more. Galaxy being one, Venture being the other. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can still get these. These are still quite easy to get hold of. And two quid. Two quid, fucking, I'd recommend it. Even if you're not a Star Trek fan, it's just nice to have on your shelf. Two pounds. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I thought I'd do this one because um, Nolsey, double zero, bless him. It's not really a Star Trek fan, yet he reviewed this before I had a chance to. So, um, I've just been busy trying to, you know, fix my computer, really. That's why I haven't done a video in a while. Um, I've done, right, I'm going to put this out there as well. Um, I don't know if anybody can help, but any information would be fantastic. I'm having a problem with my computer. My virus checker says there's no virus on it, and I've gone through it, and from what I can tell, it's, it's operating within normal parameters. However... If I go on YouTube, and if uh, if I watch a couple of videos, you know like you do when you're watching a video, then you'll skip it down to another one and watch that, then down to another one and watch that. And so you've done done that about four or five times, and then, you know, it's fine. I could do that two or three times, and then it'll go off. It'll stop it usually halfway through a video, and at the top, where it says YouTube.com, it'll say waiting for YouTube.com. And if I try going on Skype, try going on another website, it says waiting for whichever website. Um... Can, if anybody can help me, um, I've tried downloading the drivers for um, everything I've got. I've tried downloading the, you know, the new version of Flash. I've tried downloading the new version of uh, Internet Explorer. does the same thing on, on Firefox and on Safari. So um, if anybody can help, that would, that would be fantastic. But anyway, um, that's me. That's the Enterprise D. USS Enterprise NCC 1701D Galaxy Class. Um, Geonetic circuitry. Yes, that's what I've got to mention earlier. Um, Isolinear and Geonetic Systems. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's me. That's the ship. And that's the magazine. And uh, I hope you enjoyed. I am going to do another one, which is issue two. Because I have issue two already. And issue three. Um, I will catch you all later. Bye for now.